Hey there, Jim Johnson for Accent Help here, and I wanted to talk about the soft palate. There's another term for the soft palate, it's also called the velum, and what it is is the soft roof of your mouth. So if you put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, right behind your upper teeth, and draw a line back across the roof of your mouth, when you reach about as far back as your tongue is probably willing to go without you gagging on it and choking and dying, which would not be a good thing, that's about the point where your soft palate starts. So the front part is called your hard palate, and there's bone underneath that. Uh, and what you're feeling is the, the skin or the flesh cover of that. And then as you get further back, you get to the soft palate, which is a muscle instead of bone, basically. And the furthest back part of that muscle is the uvula. It's the little dangly thing at the back of your throat that on uh, cartoons you see wavering when somebody's yelling really loud. You can see the back of their throat. So it's the dangly thing, the uvula, the small grape there hanging at the back. And some people's are incredibly short so that there's barely anything there, and some are actually quite long. You may need a mirror if you want to see it and play around with the light to be able to see all the way to the back of your throat to see that uvula hanging there. And when you yawn, for example, looking in that mirror, you should see that soft palate go up and the uvula, in fact, will probably retract, pulling back on itself. And when the uvula retracts, you know that the soft palate or the velum has lifted. So that furthest back part of the mouth is where some sounds are created, like the K and the G sound, K, G, are considered velar consonants, because they happen all the way back there. Consonants. When that happens, the soft palate or the velum is lifted for the K and the G, stopping the airflow through the nose, and then the tongue is also lifted up to meet that soft palate, stopping the airflow through the mouth. So you have that stoppage for the K that finally gets released through the mouth, so it's orally released. You also have some things that are purely nasally released, like an NG, say in the word going... That's your back of your tongue meeting up with that soft palate, but the soft palate's not also closing off the nasal space, so the NG actually travels through the nose. So your soft palate really only has to be open for nasal consonants. And it's really commonly uh, the ones that occur the most for speakers of English are M, M, N, N, and the NG, M, mm, like at the end of the word ring, M. Mm. And so there your soft palate is open or dropped, as opposed to being lifted or closed. So if we take a look at a, my really sad version of a drawing of a human head, there's a nose if that gives you some idea of what this drawing's about to look like. Here's the lip, and here's your fang teeth, because you're Count Chocula here or something. And then you have the hard palate here, behind this gum ridge, right behind the upper teeth. And you have your lower jaw as well. And then you have your lower teeth. And in this space is your tongue, very large in that space. And it goes, the base of the tongue reaches down here, and you have something called the epiglottis that we'll get into on another time. And then here in this space, of the head here at this back part of this of this uh, hard palate here so if this is the hard palate perhaps here is the soft palate and this soft palate can be open it can be dropped so that airflow and sound can go through or it can actually be lifted and it can basically close off at the back so that nothing can get through there so if nothing can get through that sound is oral and if things can go through the sound is nasal so that's the difference between nasal and oral. So there are some consonants that will tend to be, that will be purely nasal. Mm, mm, mm. Almost all the other consonants can be made purely through the mouth. All the ones that you would commonly use in speech will really be happening purely through the mouth, oral. And very few people nasalize those consonants. But one thing that some people do do is they nasalize vowels. So, for example, in the word man, because the a sound is between the m and the n, man, odds are that that vowel is going to be nasalized because you're so busy with your soft palate down and then doing the vowel 
for it to lift before going down again for the N at the end, it's kind of a pain. So to be efficient, you'll tend to leave your soft palate down. Man. And you can check vowels by plugging and unplugging your nose. And if the sound doesn't change, man, then it's purely oral. But if it does change, man, I just made it more nasal, so I opened that soft palate up even more. The velum gateway is open even more. Man, before going on to another nasal consonant you get a nasalized vowel. So that's the basics of the soft palate.